Hey guys, what's up? This is Swift here and today I have an unboxing and review for you and this is a very very exciting product at least in the wireless router scene. Now uh, if you do not know already, uh, the new standards of wireless AC uh, to replace wireless N is already out um, and currently there are loads and loads of routers out there that have different standards because it's not standardized and today we have here one of the fastest router that you wireless router that you are going to see and that is the TP-Link WDR7500. Now this is the Chinese version uh, of the router and um, there is another one that you might be more familiar with. Uh, the international model is called TP-Link Archer C7. Um, so yeah, just to take note, the main difference is that this has six um, external antennas whereas the um, Archer C7 has um, four I believe or two on it uh, and that's for the 5 gigahertz band um, transmission of wireless signal whereas this has uh, for the 2.4 as well as the 5 gigahertz channel so what we want to do here is to just see how well it does and uh, we'll go on along with that um, so let's just do an unboxing first um, pardon my Chinese my Chinese language hasn't been really very good um, but I'm going to try to explain some things here um, as far as I can understand. So here is the box here. Um, we have just some of the features of the uh, router here, especially the, as you can see here, the 1.3 uh, gigabit per second on the 5 gigahertz. This is one of the latest wireless AC standard. Uh, lately, um, Asus has announced a faster one, uh, but we have yet to see it out in the market yet. And the other one is 450 Mbps, and that is for the 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless N speed. So we have uh, USB, and you have some IP control management kind of thing, pretty standard and WDS some of the logos here uh, to explain some of their features and that is the router uh, the features of the router at least um, so let's just take a look um, down and up there's nothing much um, and at the side we have just I'll have to open it to show you so at the left side the box is really huge by the way um, the router is quite big as well and uh, just take note we'll see it in a while so just some of the other products on this end and the other end let's just take a look um, you're not going to be able to see this but I'm just going to explain quickly what they are saying here uh, just operating temperature some of their number of ports they have uh, the standards of uh, wireless that they use and nothing much really um, that's about it so let's just going to open it up it's a very very shiny box oh how about just look at the back quickly upside down sorry now uh, I have very very little space to work with my bad really so um, here we have the back um, this is how the router looks like the six antenna looks really really industrial kind of thing uh, might not suit your uh, minimalistic home decor if you have one like that now, uh, the packaging itself is okay. Uh, it looks, it's definitely of the cheaper kind. As you can see, uh, the box is very, very plain and uh, nothing much, really. As you can see inside, it's a egg tray kind of material, box kind of thing. And uh, we have what we have here. I believe this is a, let's just, this is the checklist or something quality assurance counting but uh, it's not check it out okay a warrant oh no this is the quick start guide um, it's actually useful but a uh, quick tip if you have one of these routers that you're going to buy um, you can use the English version one and um, just follow along accordingly it should work because it's practically the same router on and different uh, languages only so okay and here we have the warranty cut uh, this has one year warranty according to the supplier that i gotten from uh, if i want to claim warranty i have to send back to them so uh, not too bad hopefully they don't close down and uh, sadly this is in april i'm not sure if it's going to give me based on my purchase date or um, based on the manufacturing date now we have the power adapter. 
uses the uh, kind of pin thing. Let's just take a look at the ratings. Yeah, okay, pretty standard. And uh, this is the router itself. Oh god, antennas. It looks like tentacles. And there we go, that's the TP Link um, WDR7500. So let's just take a look at the LED indicators here. We have, um, let's see if I can figure it out. Focus. Okay, uh, we have power, not sure, I think settings, wireless, wireless for both bands. Um, the LAN ports, internet, and uh, that's the WDS signal counting, I believe. Yep, and at the back, we have a dedicated on off switch. Very nice. Um, USB 1, USB 2, two USB 2.0 ports, um, one, one born, and four LAN, gigabit LAN connections, and we have a reset button at the back we just have some serial number and model number and uh, there we go the default password and uh, password and username if you want to know and that is all so uh, we'll just take a look at the settings of the router I'll do that in a while and um, We'll come to review. I do not have professional equipment, so I'll basically do a different point in my house and how well the wireless performs, and uh, just give you my thoughts on that. So I'll see you guys again soon. So before we discuss the results here, I would just want to talk briefly about my testing methodology. So I bought two of these routers, one of which will act as the router itself and the other as the connecting uh, client um, using wireless bridge mode. So now you can think the second router as something like a USB stick or something like a PCI Express adapter to uh, in your computer or laptops so on and so forth so now i've placed this in two different locations the one of which is location a which when the routers are about two meters apart and are in clear sight so now this is going to be like the best situation best case scenario to show the best performance of the wireless uh, performance now the next position is uh, location b which is directly above a floor up um, directly above the router which is about six meters apart and there is separate by a ceiling a concrete ceiling as well as a wooden tiled floor so uh, this is going to be something like your uh, scenario where you are connecting from a different room and thereabouts so uh, now I do not have very good perform uh, I don't have professional equipment and so on and so forth and I do not is this is not test in a lab environment so there are going to be a lot of interference and so on so it's just as within my house so there are going to be some congestion in the different bands and so on and so forth so uh, let's just quickly go into what you're seeing here in the chart the blue color um, bar represents wireless AC at 5 gigahertz band and the red color bar here is the wireless N at 2.4 gigahertz band now I am unable to test um, wireless N at the 5 gigahertz mainly because the router does not allow you to bridge a wireless bridge connection using a um, wireless N connection in the 5 gigahertz band. Now they choose, they will simply choose the best connection, best available uh, connectivity uh, for the bands that you can choose. So I can choose 2.4 gigahertz and the best is wireless N. And if for 5 gigahertz band, they will choose the wireless AC automatically. So uh, unless I get a USB adapter or something like that, I will be, I will not be able to um, test a wireless N5 gigahertz so I might be updating this in the future so now you can see here the wireless AC performance clearly um, shines above wireless N and uh, in both locations uh, it does very well and in terms of the best performance kind of thing location A we see wireless AC um, providing results that are very 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 astounding um, at 369.29 megabits per second download and 174.69 uh, uploads so uh, this compared to the 95.05 uh, megabits per second download of the wireless N and the 78.79 upload which is uh, probably about half or third um, of the speed of wireless AC now if you move them apart 
we are going to see that the difference between wireless AC and wireless N is still there but not as great, uh, roughly half uh, the performance difference. So uh, it's still very good at 186.68 megabits per second download and 120.193 uh, megabits per second upload for wireless AC. Now uh, this performance should be roughly similar to the wireless N at 5 gigahertz. I believe um, the wireless N at 5 gigahertz should still be slower slightly, not too sure. But um, from what I see in past experience of other wireless AC routers, the performance should be somewhere there. So now let's just discuss about something about the results here. Now the wireless performance itself of the router is um, pretty average, I would say. Um, I do not have any other wireless AC router to compare, but comparing what people have said um, about other, um, other routers out there like the ASUS, um, AC66U as well as the um, D-Link uh, DIR865 I believe I cannot um, remember off my head right now but um, the results are quite decent uh, especially if you compare the best performance kind of situation in location A um, the TP-Link WDR7500 is actually pretty damn good uh, putting itself on one of the top performance and uh, if you compare, obviously, the location B in terms of wall penetration, uh, wireless coverage, um, I believe the TP-Link is slightly below average. But uh, hey, the price you're paying for it, um, I guess you can compromise in such a way. And uh, it is not the best, but it is decent enough as well for you to use it um, good. So um, the next thing, let's just talk about other features here. Um, the router has your standard router features such as um, DDNS, um, dyna uh, dynamic name service, as well as things such as um, print servers and so on and so forth. Um, there are other things also as such as gas network, which is very handy. You can basically set up a network where your gas, they come in, they can connect to that and it will be separated from your um, current network that you have so to prevent any kind of infiltration or privacy kind of thing so this will help on that also there are parental controls there um, you can restrict and filter access to different websites um, based on ip or the connecting uh, clients uh, mac id as well so this is very useful parents out there uh, and uh, if you're wondering about usb performance of the router i uh, did do a test as well and um it isn't the best, I would say. Um, it topped at about um, 8.10 megabyte per second write and uh, 9.74 megabyte uh, per second read. So pretty slow there. Uh, it's a USB 2.0 port if you're wondering. And uh, this isn't the best USB performance of any router by any means. Now, uh, let's just talk about some of the problems of this router now while well, i set it up and i used it and tested it, there seems to be some instability of the software and firmware of the router so for example when i connect i'm mean, using the wireless bridge mode of the router if i connect both bands um, the router of the client as well as the router of the the main router will hang and stall and uh, suddenly your wireless will be cut off, your internet will be cut off as well. So uh, that's one thing to take note. Also, when I was setting it up, um, the different times I set different things, I might have mis misunderstood stuff and maybe tick a wrong box or something, and it's extremely unforgiving. And unforgiving in the sense that it can go haywire such that you will have to reset the router completely. And I did face this, I think, about once or twice. So uh, it is quite troublesome. Now, then the next thing is that if you're going to buy the WDR7500, you're going to face a problem of language issues. Um, basically, the whole web management is in um, Chinese. Now, you can get past this by simply looking at the English menu of the Archer C7. The web management uh, menu are exactly the same thing. So you can just compare. But uh, this is going to be quite troublesome for some people as well. So uh, once you have everything set up though, uh, the router should work as it is. Now my router is running for a few days already. I recently just resetted it to do some other further tests. 
but uh, as of now there isn't much problems I don't face problems of freezing I don't face problems of any other thing as of now but during the time of testing the wireless performance did um, kind of dwindle after a while but it got back up again not sure what's going on there perhaps the firmware got some problems again now uh, so that's something you should take note about so let's just jump to the conclusion um, the TP-Link TLWDR7500 is a great budget wireless AC router. Now, you're never going to get something at this price out there. Um, if you're wondering, I paid about 110 US dollars. If you can count in shipping, you can count in everything, 110 USD dollars. If you want a faster expedited uh, shipping of perhaps DHL and so on and so forth, you're going to pay about 130, which is still so much cheaper than, um, say, the the Asus AC66U, that's about 199 or perhaps Netgear, uh, which is about around that price range. So, uh, but with this price of UDC, you're going to come with some of the problems like I mentioned before, language issues as well as the unstable firmware. But uh, in terms of budget and value, this is the best value for money product that I can recommend you get for the wireless AC scene right now. So that's about it. If you want the full written review, you can head on down to the description and uh, I have a link to the uh, written review of this router at my website. So other than that, um, do give me a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, do subscribe for more such videos. If you have any questions, do leave a comment or you can message me as well and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. So I'll see you guys again soon.